In this video, we're going to begin a small project where we're going to create a chain mail from scratch. You could also apply this technique to creating something like a wool sweater or knit cap or any other type of object where you want to create a similar pattern all the way across the span of an object. So let's get started by going to the file menu. Now you could import your character which you plan to apply the chain mail or the cloth object to and use the polygons from that model in that particular area to not only generate the cloth object but also to generate your retopo mesh which we would bake all the detail down to. But in this case I'm going to start with either something like this, the human primitive or the mannequin. And this will be my base object. So I'm just going to pick the one I want to keep and I'll delete the ones I don't need. I want to make this independent of its parent layer by right clicking, choosing change parent, root. Okay, and I'll also choose this section here. And I'll drag that into this other hierarchy. So that's our upper section. Now with this one, I can delete that. I'll also select this head and neck layer and delete that. The hands I'm gonna keep as sort of a pinning object for the claw simulation. You'll see what I mean here shortly. But the left hand here, I'll pick that. You see 3D Coat chooses it automatically here in the box tree layer panel. And with this one, I'm going to use the transform tool to rotate it up just a little bit so it catches the cloth or prevents it from slipping down past the wrist area. Okay, so that looks good enough. And I'll step out of the transform tool. Now, with the hand, you'll notice we have all these child layers, which are all the digits here for the fingers. I'm going to merge all of these together into the parent layer by right clicking and choosing Merge Subtree. Okay. Now, this other hand, I don't need it, so I'll select it and just delete it. The reason being is I will copy this one over um, after having, you know, rotated it. Now, I could have done the same thing to the other one, but I think it's a little bit faster just to go ahead and copy this one over. So, uh, let's do that. Let's hit the S key now to turn symmetry on. And I want to make sure that I have the right layer selected. Turn symmetry on. And I can just lightly tap the side I want to copy from. And then click Sim Copy. Okay. So there we go. Now with this one. I will make that independent. This is another way that you can uh, do that as opposed to just right clicking and choosing change parent. There's a couple different ways you can do it. But um, this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to merge all of these layers together. But I don't need symmetry on for this. Okay, let's right click and choose merge subtree. There we go. One thing I want to point out is when you are working with voxels, you'll notice that objects that are very close together or touching will essentially get fused together. We want to clean this up a little bit though, so I'll scroll down to the bottom and click Smooth All a few times. So to fill in a little bit more, let's go ahead and Right click and drag up. With the fill tool, I like to exaggerate it quite a bit because sometimes it'll still leave a small indentation. 
There we go. Oh, let me undo. And now we need to turn symmetry on. Okay. So that we don't have to do the work twice as we fill this in. And I'm going to turn shadows off. You can do that from the geometry menu right here. I think it will suffice for now. There's more that we could do, but we'll leave it as it is. Now with symmetry still enabled, I'm going to use auto retopo to generate a low polygon mesh. Um, let's go to the move tool and I'm going to tweak this just a little bit here. It's fine. Now let's right click and choose Auto Retopo. We could use Instant Meshes Auto, but 3D Coat's default Auto Retopo algorithm will give us a cleaner mesh. We want to estimate our poly count here and leave the other parameters at their default. The first step of the wizard 3D Coat is asking Do I want to paint select areas where I need? greater polygonal density. In this case, I do not, so I'll click Next. And now we are given the ability to apply strokes to essentially give the algorithm hints as to where we want our edge flow. So I do need to add something here. I could let 3D Coat try to do this on its own, and many times it will do a very good job, but um, just in my own testing on this particular object, I do need to give it something around the neckline. And let's see, let's go to an orthographic view by hitting the five key on the number pad or clicking the little cube in the navigation bar here that will toggle in and out of orthographic or perspective view. And then we can go to a side view or front view here. I'm just going to use my hotkeys. Go to a side view or front view. And let me make a selection right there. Right there. And three coat is usually fairly good about uh, detecting sharp edges. If I use something like the cutoff tool here, uh, it would be especially sharp, and I probably would not have to create uh, a loop. But since I don't necessarily have really sharp edges, I'm going to give three coat some hints. You can connect these up, but you don't necessarily have to. And if your model's symmetrical and you have the symmetry enabled, you don't need to make lines on the opposite side. In fact, the tooltip here suggests that you do not. Okay, so I think that should suffice, but I'm going to give it one more hint right here down the side. And one more right here along the base of the chest. Now let's click Next. If you don't get the result that you're looking for, you can just delete the retopo layer and here in the Vox Tree Layer panel, we don't have to go back to the Sculpt workspace to do this. We can invoke Auto Retopo by right clicking on the layer in the Vox Tree here as well. Okay. So, we did a fairly good job overall. Um, 
What I want to do now though, is I want to create openings here in the neckline and the base of the wrist and here at the bottom. Let's go to the select tool, switch to faces. I can use my bracket keys to increase or decrease my brush size. I'll just go ahead and brush. That's one side of the plane. If you need to deselect, let's say for example, if you over selected, you can hold down the control key and just click or brush and it can deselect it. Let's hit the delete key. And we will do the same thing here. Then I'm going to reduce my brush size. the delete key and let me undo I can expand if I need in this case I'll do that and hit delete since I had symmetry on it do it on the opposite side as well and here what I may do is switch to edges mode and hold down the shift key and it will select contiguous edges to create an edge loop selection Okay, now let's switch to faces. Hit the delete key, and since we are still in faces mode, I can double click these faces here because it's selecting all contiguous faces when I double click. I hit the delete key again. Okay, so let's tweak it just a little bit with the brush tool. If we need to move this, we can select the edges here on the end and use the transform tool to move it up, but I think we'll be okay. Um, I could also use things like slide edges. If I need to slide some of these edges here at the bottom, you could use delete edges if you need to remove some of these edges. Let's say, for example, if I want to delete every other loop, I, I can do that by hovering over an edge. And with the control key held down, it will select entire edge loops. When I click, it'll delete entire edge loops. So you can just select every other one if you want. However, I'm not going to do that. And the reason is because with cloth simulation, you do want a little bit of resolution in the areas where you are going to have wrinkles or large cloth folds. Okay, so right here, in the arm area, we probably would want enough geometry to create those wrinkles. All right, um, with the brush tool, then I can tweak it a little bit before proceeding. Okay, I think we're good. So now, if we need, we can drag a copy of this into the Retopo Models Palette, which is similar to the Models Palette in the Sculpt Workspace, except the Models Palette in the Sculpt Workspace may have a lot of triangulated meshes because that's what you're working with in the Sculpt Workspace. However, here, most of your models are probably quad-based, so that's why there is a difference but we can drag our Retopo layer into the Retopo Models palette. And I've already done that with um, uh, cloth. I've already created a folder. You can make it a project folder or a categorized folder, whatever the case may be, and you just drag and drop your files into it. It creates it quickly enough. So I have it here. If I need to get back to it for any reason, with that done, we're going to stop right here and pick up in the next video in the Sculpt Workspace where we will begin using the Cloth tool where we can simulate our cloth before applying the pattern.